One of the great things about football is that it's so unpredictable and no club is at the top forever. If you look at Manchester United, as soon as they lost Sir Alex Ferguson, they went completely downhill because the club was built around him. In my opinion, it's similar with Pep Guardiola. As soon as he leaves Man City, there's going to be a big opportunity for the so-called big clubs in and around Man City to compete with them because everything is centred towards Pep Guardiola. It's all him isn't it same as with sir alex ferguson at chelsea though you never had this because we never had a manager who was there who had any sort of longevity it was always if you don't succeed that's it you're out if you finish second in the league that's not good enough you're sacked end of story so as soon as roman abramovich left that was our downfall because our standards completely went out the window. I mean, we haven't even got any standards anymore, have we? It's just uh, try your best. That's basically it. And so many mistakes have been made along the way as soon as Todd Boneley came in. First of all, he decided to cull the Chelsea team. I mean, the year before that, we had achieved a top four finish, which we would love to have now under Thomas Tuchel. We got to two cup finals. Yes, we lost them all, both. But still, you know, it wasn't a bad season compared to what we've had in the last two seasons. And the season before that, 2021, we actually won the Champions League, which is the greatest trophy you can win. And some people said it was papering over the craps, cracks, rather, not craps, <laughs> cracks. But I tell you what, that's some wallpaper, isn't it? I, I would say that is crap, if I'm honest, complete crap. Because to win the Champions League, it's one of the best trophies you can ever win in football. So for me, papering over the cracks, cracks, <laughs> what a load of crap. <laughs> yeah. And so much of what we achieved under Roman, I mean, it's just been completely destroyed, hasn't it, under Todd Boneley? I don't think that's harsh to say. I mean... The policy of only signing youngsters is just such a bizarre one for me. I know he's basing this on his American franchises in baseball and other sports, but come on, this is the Premier League, it's football, it's not soccer, it's football. And I don't think he has much of a clue about anything, if I'm honest. I mean, as soon as he came in appointing Paul Wynn Stanley from Brighton, just 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 bizarre to me and of course he got rid of Tuchel after a couple of bad results after as I said the previous season we finished in the top four he won us the Champions League he done so much at the club and he was such a positive force wasn't he he was so energetic up and down that touchline and then of course Todd brings in Potter Mr um, we tried our best we just had a crisis meeting yeah Graham Potter that was a complete disaster wasn't it and no to you know, it was just a complete disaster. And as soon as he done that, as soon as he brought in Graham Potter, Paul Wynn Stanley, and all of those Brighton losers, Chelsea were never going to achieve anything. And I just hope Todd will understand that football isn't like this, that you need experience, you need people who have been there, done it, that know, they know what they're doing. Not, not for example, you sign a player, a youngster, oh, he looks really promising for a season at Brighton or a so-called club like that, and then they come to Chelsea. It's a, even though we're not very good in the league, it is still a bigger step up than playing for Brighton because the expectation is there. The fans aren't going to be like, oh, it's all right, we lost. Oh, it's not the end of the world, is it? No, it's Chelsea. It's about winning, or rather it should be. And that's the biggest mistake since they've came in, is that to them, Chelsea isn't about winning. It's about signing lots of youngsters, trying to progress them. And is it about winning? Is there ever going to be a point where we're going to be Premier League champions under Todd Boneley and the new owners? Can you ever foresee that as a Chelsea fan? For me, I can't. And I know, I'm sorry, that sounds very pessimistic, very defeatist in a way, but... Unless they radically change their thinking. I mean, recently they're talking about signing that player from Brighton. I think it's Ferguson, somebody like that. Another youngster, a striker. He's having a very good season. But again, half a season and you're going to spend over £100 million. I mean, they need their heads examining. They really do because you sign a player for over £100 million if you know they're a great footballer. If you know they're going to be quality 
straight away. You don't spend a hundred million on a kid that may never reach his full potential, may have only showed it for half a season and then is never going to be a great footballer. It's just complete madness. I think everything they've done, I don't think they've done anything right. Not really. From a match going fans point of view what if i liked i think i've said before i like that they've um opened uh, <laughs> the bar at stanford bridge after the match i think that should have been done years ago and then i'm sort of scratching my head i'm like what have i liked that they've done what what, what have i really thought wow that was a good idea not a lot if i'm honest not a lot at all and I just can't believe how dramatically things have changed. I know that is what's great about football. It's not if you're winning, though, is it? You always want to win if you're being honest about it. I'm always going to be a Chelsea fan if we're in the conference, wherever we play. I will always be a Chelsea fan. But obviously, I'd rather see us winning. Or It's not even about winning at the moment. It's about being competitive as a football club. I mean, I'm not impressed with Mauricio Pochettino. I don't think he's done much. There's no philosophy. There's no shape. We're, I mean, if you look where we are in the league, we're 10th. It's not great, is it? We're in the semi-final of the League Cup. Yes, we lost against Middlesbrough. That wasn't great. It was a poor performance. I know Palmer could have scored and should have, but I'm not going to blame him because he's the only spark. He's the only player we've signed that I think, wow, what a player, Palmer. He's been fantastic. The others, the jury's out on many of them. I can't think that any of them have added any value to the team. And what I was saying about Todd when he first came in, he totally decimated that Champions League winning squad, didn't he? Now you've only got Silver, you've only got James and Chilwell left from that Champions League winning team. So it was just such a bizarre way to approach things. You come into a successful football club, one of the most successful football clubs for the last 20 years, and you cull it. You say, no, I'm going to do it my way. They've had lots of success, but I can do it even better. That's basically what he said. And how arrogant was that? It was just a complete joke, wasn't it? Everything he's done thus far has been poor. So I'm really hoping Todd will put his hands up and say, I made a mistake. You know, it, it seems unlikely, doesn't it, from everything that comes out of Chelsea, because everything's rosy, everything's wonderful, isn't it? We've got this great young team, we're going to conquer the world. Yeah, I can't see it personally. Sorry again to be pessimistic, but come on, L look at facts. We're still 10th in the league. We've played a little bit better this season in some matches, yes, but not many. As soon as we take a step forward, we step two steps back that's what it seems like to me there hasn't been a point where i've been like oh yeah i can really see things are improving yeah we're so much better under pochettino no nothing and i do find it funny when people don't want Mourinho back and they they're very happy with pochettino they think he's a he's a winning manager he's good at producing these young players good at bringing them through well apart from harry kane none of those players at tottenham were world-class players. You can't say any of those players that he brought through at Tottenham were world-class. Deli Alley, couple of seasons, that was it. They said he was the new Frank Lampard. Ha <laughs> ha, what a joke! And then, of course, you got Kieran Dyer. What's his name? Dyer, yeah, in the middle of the pitch? No way! He's just a good player at best. And they'd won nothing, Tottenham. Absolutely nothing. Mauricio Pochettino bottled the league and he really did bottle the league at Spurs some people were like no he didn't and I'm like of course he did none of the top teams at the time Chelsea included were in that title race it was Tottenham and Leicester they bottled it and we stopped them winning it when it was the battle of the bridge and that's one of my favorite matches ever because I do hate Tottenham I'm a Chelsea fan of course I hate them yeah so I was never in favor of the appointment I never got the hype. I never thought, oh, wow, we've got Pochettino. And I've never called him P-O-C-H. And I never will. I'm never going to say that because that's a Tottenham thing, isn't it? Calling him that. He's Pochettino. Yeah. I can't watch his press conferences. He just talks a load of waffle for me. Today, what was he saying? He was saying about how um, Brighton lost against Middlesbrough. And it turns out that they actually won. Yeah, but... I mean, I wasn't too concerned about that. It wasn't very good. Yeah, it was poor against Middlesbrough. But the defeat, I don't think it's going to matter because I think we're going to 
progress to the final. I, I, I think we can easily overturn a 1-0 defeat at home. You would like to think so. I think we'll win a 2-0, maybe 3-0, something like that. Maybe they'll score one. But I think we'll get to the final. But are we going to win in the final? Are we going to beat Liverpool? It seems very unlikely. Maybe on penalties we might have a chance. Uh, now Mason Mount has left. Oh, yeah, I did say that. Well, he was the reason we lost those two cup finals under Tuchel, really, wasn't he, if you think about it? We gave him a pass at the time because, um, yeah, Chelsea through and through. Uh, that didn't work out, did it? But, yeah, it's all very oh, underwhelming, isn't it, at the moment? Because even if we win this final against Liverpool, are you going to be over the moon about it? Are you going to think... Wow, yeah, what an ach I'm not. I'm just going to be like, yeah, that's good, yeah. A League Cup, yeah, it's always good to win a domestic trophy. And winning a League Cup can lead, lead to better things. Of course it can. But I'm not going to be over the moon if we win it. I'll, I'll be happy about it, of course. I'm always happy when Chelsea win silverware. I'm not saying we're going to, because I think if we, if we get to the final, we're not there yet. Beating Liverpool won't be easy by any stretch of the imagination. But I imagine if we win the League Cup, Todd Bonely and the PR machine at Chelsea, they'll make out this is bigger than winning the Champions League. They'll really, like, go overkill with it. And it's such a shame when he came in. I just don't understand why he decided to get rid of everything that was working and replace it with rubbish. A lot of the players... Some of these so-called youngsters will make it. There's a couple of bright sparks. Palmer is the main one, isn't he? But a lot of them will never become great footballers. They'll just be good, average, also rands, really. They're not going to be world-class players. And I, I, I don't know where they got this philosophy when they were thinking, right, we're just going to get rid of everything that was succeeding. We're going to sign a load of youngsters because uh, we know best. We're going to get... a uh, an experienced manager, really, in the Premier League. Only had a couple of seasons. He's going to do it. He didn't. He led Chelsea to one of the worst finishes ever in the Premier League. And then the next season, yeah, Pochettino's a bit more acceptable because he did manage Tottenham and they got in the top four. A bit more acceptable. Not a winner, but a bit more acceptable. We're still 10th. You know, nothing's changed. Nothing's got better. Not really. If you're being honest about it, I mean, you'll see all these big accounts out there with lots of followers saying, oh, yeah, everything's wonderful. Chelsea are fantastic. We're, we're building for the future. But the reason is, I'll tell you now, it's because they're media accounts and they want to get on with Chelsea because they want to get the inside. You know, they want to get the interviews. They want to get this, that and the other. That's the reason why these big accounts keep putting out this stuff it's not because they believe this it's because it's not in their interest to um, be honest about it honestly but anyway our next match against Fulham I'm going to go to the match tomorrow I am looking forward to it after all I've said I always look forward to going to the bridge me and my dad are going to go we always go uh, we're going to enjoy it, I hope. Well, well, we'll enjoy it before the match and after. Well, maybe not after. But, yeah, I think we could win. Yeah, I mean. But then again, the way Fulham played against Liverpool, Williams still got it, hasn't he? What a fantastic player. And what a fantastic goal against Liverpool. That, that really reminded me of Eden Hazard's goal, you know, against Liverpool, that fantastic goal. And that's another one. Why did we get rid of him? That was, of course, under Abramovich, I believe. But still... He still had something in the tank, and a lot of these older players do. I don't know why we're anti-experience. I mean, I'd love us to sign a player that's 26. That would seem like an old man, wouldn't it, in this modern-day Chelsea? And I think that's what a lot of fans want. They want a balance of youth and experience. The only way the youth, the youngsters, learn is from experienced players. It's true. John Terry learned from Marcel Desailly. I was hoping Coldwell would learn from Thiago Silva. But that's another thing about Pochettino that really annoys me. He doesn't play a settled team. I know you have to rotate a little bit when we have had injuries, but a lot of the time he just rotates and rotates. There's not a settled back four, for example. If you want the team to be good defensively, you play a settled back four. That is just common football knowledge the game hasn't changed that much in all these years it really hasn't that's another thing i see that online all the time people saying oh the game's moved on you gotta play this way and it's complete rubbish a complete myth 
that football has moved on. It's the same game. You can win in lots of different ways. You haven't got to play the Pep Guardiola way. You can play however you like. And it's very weak as well. If you stick to one philosophy, you're losing the match, and then you're like, I'm going to stick with it. And this is all I've got as a football manager. If, if you have to go a different way, if you have to be more direct to get a goal, to get a result, that's what you do because you need to do it to get the result. You don't be arrogant and be, no, that's not my philosophy because I'm such a great football manager. It's just bizarre to me, all of that is. And I've never liked it, to be honest, ever since I've been a Chelsea fan. I mean, we never used to play like that years ago. In the 90s, we didn't play like that. Under Mourinho, we never played like that. Under Conti, under Ancelotti... When we were winning, we never played the Pep Guardiola way, where you're passing it along the back for 10 minutes, and it's just risky. It's It doesn't suit Chelsea. It's never suited Chelsea. The first manager to implement this was Maurizio Sarri, and that was some of the most boring football I've ever witnessed as a Chelsea fan. People were falling asleep at half-time. I'm not even joking. I'm not joking at all. It was the most boring, mundane pile of rubbish I've ever witnessed as a Chelsea fan and ever since then every manager nearly has decided to go down this route so every Chelsea young fan thinks this is the only way you can play football because most of the successful clubs play like this but Chelsea never did and when we used to play Barcelona they would play like this all the time under Guardiola and we would outplay them by playing a different style of football a more aggressive a more counter-attacking football and people said it was boring and I'm like what are you talking about it was so much more exciting to witness that kind of football as a Chelsea fan because when you went forward it was with purpose. It was to score a goal. It wasn't having a thousand passes and then doing absolutely nothing with it. Or maybe potentially having one shot at goal. I mean, I hate all that. It's like with goal kicks. I know every team does it now. But when Chelsea first started to do this, I was like, oh. It's, it doesn't really help when a goalkeeper takes a short goal kick. It never achieves anything more than if you hit it long. It doesn't. Same with corners. That's another a real... Ha I hate that about modern football, the way they don't cross it into the box anymore. If you look at Chelsea when we were winning under Abramovich, you had John Terry, you had Ivanovic, you had Drogba, you had all these players that could score headers. And we would never waste a corner by doing a short corner, would we? We'd whip it in and then score from a header, and we did that so many times at Chelsea. And I really don't like the way every club now has bought into this philosophy and they think it's the only way to play, play football. I think it's one of the biggest myths ever.